to be the setter for Louisville, Ellie Glock, to get us underway. And the ACC volleyball season for both Louisville and Syracuse has begun. For Louisville, here's Charity Looper to score the first points of the match. Looper, the UCLA transfer, who had a couple of stellar games in the ranked matchups with Kentucky and Stanford. 13 kills to lead Louisville against UK and then a double-double against the Cardinal last weekend. Glock once again. For Syracuse, the swing there errantly came from Sherlene Antonio, the Iowa Western Junior College transfer who has been in and out of the lineup, did not play in either of the last two games, but gets the start tonight. Again, for a team that has struggled with injury this year in Syracuse. There's the first point for the Orange on a service error from Glock. And now Zaria Harris Wadi, the freshman from New Jersey. Played in all 31 sets of the season, now 32 sets for Syracuse. Down the middle, that was Hannah Sherman with the swing for Louisville, was inches away from a point, but ultimately did get it. Sherman starting down the middle tonight for Louisville in place of Kara Cressy Steph. Yeah, great swing there from Sherman, an even better defensive touch from Lita Muller, but that ball ultimately went down. We'll see how Glock and Sherman can connect in the middle. That's a tough, a tough substitution to make when that middle connection is something that really needs to be practiced. First appearance for Sherman in any contest for Louisville since September 2nd. That was against Northern Kentucky in a non-conference event in South Dakota. Point there goes to Louisville. Greta Schlichter, freshman out of Germany. Had the swing for Syracuse that resulted in the Louisville point. And Charity Looper, you see the numbers over the last couple of games, really sensational, but not quite so there with a service error. Looper a bit up and down in her service game. Eight aces and now 20 errors on the season. After serving comes defense and three rotations across the back row, and that's really where Looper thrives and finds her game. When she's digging well, that translates into offense, and she scores points. That was one of the question marks coming into this season for Louisville would be how Charity Looper fit in, playing in the role of Claire Chausse, the All-American who departed after last season for Louisville. There's an ace for the Cardinals. And Looper has really answered those questions positively over the last couple of weeks, notably in those big games. I mentioned the 13 kills against Kentucky to lead Louisville and then the double-double against Stanford. Yeah, I feel like she really found herself during the Stanford game and was back row attacking and scoring off of some different shots, which was her strength. But again, it really fed from her defense. She was phenomenally defensively during that match. PK, one of the two primary middle blockers for Louisville off the bench, but Anna DeBeer there. The superstar Cardinal couldn't handle it. Just a bit awkward as she tried to bump it to a teammate. And it ricocheted off the net, and it's a point to Syracuse. Well, we mentioned Schlichter, who's serving now, but she just hit that ball in the front row before she rotated back. And she is a libero by trait, but playing front row right now. And that ball just comes from a different angle when it's not a big hitter that you're playing against. And Iko and PK need to make an adjustment on the block. A heavy swing there for Michael Jones to score for Louisville. But to your point about Schlichter, the injuries causing that problem for Syracuse, having players play a little bit out of position early on in the season. As we get a look at that Michael Jones swing right into the chest of Schlichter. Point there for Syracuse as Lauren McCabe, a transfer from Seattle, gets the kill. McCabe, a high-profile transfer, started every match played in all 78 sets last year for Seattle. Now and serving Alyssa Burt. Go ahead. Running that slide and hitting off the block is McCabe's favorite shot. There's Ellie Glock. But a violation will give a point to Syracuse. She got up and dunked that ball over, but managed to touch the net in the meantime. Rare opportunity for Ellie Glock, a setter. I feel like Danny looks like she wants to challenge it. 
She does. She, Danny Buscombe <laughs> Kelly a little bit She has a anxious sparkle over there. in her yeah. eye. <laughs> But Syracuse needs to be more disciplined on that block and make sure that they're taking care of Ellie Glock out of the middle and not letting her score points. Bert, the Colorado State transfer who started last year, played 103 sets for Syracuse in her second year with the Orange with that error. Now Anna DeBeer with Louisville ahead by three. And just a missed touch there from Ariana Jobert, sophomore from Chicago, who played some last year as a freshman, totaled 18 blocks and 15 kills, has been called into a bit more action this year. Already has 43 kills to her name. Couldn't find that finishing touch there, though. That went off the tape. There's DeBeer out of the back row, and DeBeer gets the job done. Antonio defensively couldn't control it. That's a great swing and a great offense from Ellie Glock. We just saw her tip a ball, and then that keeps the block disciplined and allows them to use a fourth hitter with DeBeer out of the back row. Saw the terrific numbers for DeBeer against Stanford, 17 and 8. Kind of took a back seat against Kentucky a little bit to Looper offensively. But Louisville knows that Anna DeBeer is in their back pocket every single night. A player that can always turn up and get you between 15 and 20 kills with regularity. There's Glock accounting for that net violation a couple of points ago. And I think this is a step up for Ellie Glock's game, is beginning to become a more aggressive setter and make sure that she's holding the block. And when you are an aggressive setter, it's opening up the world for your hitters as a blocker has to pay attention to you. And then you usually have single blocks for both of your attackers. Here is Wadi with the attacking error there to give Louisville another point. And for Louisville, Alexis Fittenbull coming in for just her second set of the season. Red-shirted last year. And in this game where Louisville is a heavy favorite, Danny Busboom Kelly allowing some lesser experienced players to see some court time early on, but Finvold unable to take advantage of that appearance with the service error. Alexis is a setter by trait and was going into play right back, and you see her giggling a little bit that maybe she missed her opportunity. There's Melina Brooking for the Cuse. The beer. That's pinpoint from Anna. You see Glock here backpedaling to this ball and able to find Anna DeBeer out of the back row in a very in tempo. That's the fastest set that can be run based on the position of that pass, and DeBeer nailed it. And there's a point and a kill for Shirlene Antonio of Syracuse. We mentioned that Antonio hasn't had a lot of matches this uh, season yet, but you see after each play, her and Lita Miller talking, what can we do better? How can we make this connection? And that's the exact things that Coach Bakir is looking for. There's Iko Jones getting in on the act for Louisville. Jones, the super senior, to use a term that is used quite a bit these days across not just college volleyball, but college sports. Brad student. Been around this program a long time and has played a number of roles. Is this OG program. still like a cool term? It is, that I, th be? I think. Well, it is to me. That's a, it. We're going to call her Iko the OG. I love it. Iko the OG. And there is the OG with the block to score to Louisville and send us to our first timeout of the evening. Cardinals in orange, Louisville in front. And they did it. Several ACC teams ranked in the national polls. Several other teams also receiving votes in the national polls. It is among the best volleyball that the ACC has produced as Syracuse able to score out of the timeout. You see the hitting percentages. 
That's one of the big differences on the stat sheet season wide for both of these teams. Exemplified in this first set. There's Hannah Sherman. The score for Louisville, assisted by Ellie Glock. And great low, quick pass there from Elena Scott. The ball got to the setter fast, and Sherman got to the setter even faster. Hannah Sherman redshirted last year. Played four sets against Wright State early on in this season, then played one set against Northern Kentucky. In the next set of games hasn't seen action in a few weeks as Louisville scores once again, this time with Iko Jones. Look to Louisville to continue to use the offense off the right side, and Iko Jones with Schlichter blocking up there as the libero playing outside hitter for Syracuse. Here's Elena Scott, the All-American for the Cardinals. Nearing a little bit of history as well, we may potentially see tonight. Closing in on her 1,000th big. But a point there for Syracuse, as that one was touched. You see Melina Brooking heading to the bench. And Greta Schlichter, former German Youth International. A pair of German Youth Internationals on this team with Leader Mueller as well. There's PK for Louisville. Jobert with the swing for Syracuse, and then Iko Jones powerfully across the court scores for the Cardinals. Great swing by Jones inside the block of Syracuse. And Iko off to a strong start, three for three. And you see Louisville using the double sub here with Reese Robbins going front row and Brigitte Petrenko coming in to set and serve. Petrenko serving the close to Carolina transfer. He's played in a reserve setter role so far this year. Point for Syracuse. McCabe on that slide again. McCabe runs this slide very fast. It's not a high ball, but it's fast, and she's great at decision making. If the block's there, she'll hit off the block's outside hand, and if not, she's able to find that seam. McCabe finished third in solo blocks for Seattle before transferring over. Here's Anna DeBeer, denied the first time, but comes through the second time. And it's hard to deny, typically used in serving situations. She's got a pair of aces on the season. Out of the timeout, P.K. and Looper up defensively for Louisville. Then P.K. and Reese Robbins, who has also checked into the game, a freshman. And then Louisville with this violation to give Syracuse a point. Net violation on P.K. there. As she, sometimes it's hard to time your block on a back row attack. And that was not only a back row attack, then it was an off-speed ball. P.K. tried to hang as long as she could, but eventually you're hanging in the net. Petrenko setting up P.K., who this time scores for Louisville, making up for that point. I love the setting decision by Petrenko to come right back to a player that had made an error and get their confidence back right away. P.K. preseason all ACC, averaging a kill and a half per set. C.C. Rush, a fan favorite, always gets a big cheer and a big hand when she comes into the game, does here. Syracuse trying to get it over. Sherman and Robbins, two towering players up front for Louisville. This time, score off the block. That's a huge block when everyone in the gym, based on the great cover, knew where this ball was going. And Sherman finishes with that inside hand, so the ball goes straight down. Anna Sherman at 6-3. Had seven blocks coming into tonight. That one right through the pair of Robbins and Sherman. Hard to do that. And Much Antonio better decision able to score. there, though, from Antonio, because the one before she took the big swing when everyone knew it was coming to her, there she was able to look for the open spot on the floor and just find a way to get it there, maybe without power. Elena Scott checks back in for Louisville with Rush and PK heading to the bench. 
Here's Brooking serving for Syracuse. Louisville sets it up for the freshman, Robbins. Reese Robbins, 16 kills in 20 sets of action coming into tonight. A freshman that's had her number called many times early on this year and has looked the part of Antonio back row. We've seen the setter hitter connection improve and the decision making prove just within this set. Louisville three points away as Looper with her left hand gets it over. An opportunity here for Syracuse. And they are able to take advantage. Antonio once again. She's leading the way for the Orange. Her sixth kill that leads all players on the night. And her first swing was an error. Her and the setter talked about it, and she has been on the up since then. Point for Syracuse on the ace, Aiden Bartlett. Defensively for Louisville. Couldn't bring it in. We talked about the load DeBeer typically carries in serve receive, and she is not in the match at this point. So the Orange looking for a little run, unable to build one here. Would have been a terrific time for them to do that. With Louisville on the precipice. You see Harris Wadi there heading to the bench. You also see something you're not going to see this much from the Louisville Cardinals this season, and Reese Robbins is playing back row. A little experimentation tonight from Danny Busboom, Kelly, Louisville's head coach. That's been clear so far. There's DeBeer with the offhand. How about that? Up high with the left. And now Louisville a point away from taking control on the scoreboard the way they've had control on the floor thus far. Looper to serve. And a challenging one for Syracuse, but they're able to get it over with Antonio. The swing and then the dig from Scott. Out of the back row is Looper. And Antonio, the target once again offensively for Syracuse. Here's an opportunity for Louisville, though. Looper out of the back row denied. Petrenko to DeBeer. And it's going to be a Louisville point to close out the first set. Danny Busboom College Volleyball has been simply preamble. This is when the season really begins as conference play is underway. There's Petrenko with the early ball out of the timeout. Syracuse has to get it over with Burtz. Sherman. Looper keeps it alive. Can DeBeer get it over? She cannot. Louisville, great effort defensively. Just unable to return that ball and a smile from Anna DeVere. There's been a lot of talk about the growth of the game in volleyball and all the attendance records, but can we also talk about that Anna DeVere made Sports Center by hustling oh, after a ball and then getting a block in the Stanford match? There have been a few Sports Center quality plays this year from Louisville Volleyball. It is terrific. It, it's, a, it's a conversation you can have all season long at any point, but it's terrific to see the growth of this sport. Noted by those big crowds we saw last week for Louisville against Kentucky and Stanford as Sherman scores to get the Cardinals on the board in set number two. Great swing there for Sherman. We usually see her hitting a one ball, staying in front of the setter, but you see here her going a fast tempo slide and getting outside that block. It was nearly 13,000 in the building a week ago. A little over a week ago, in fact, as Louisville took on Kentucky. Nearly 10,000 in the building on Sunday when they battled Stanford. It's only about, you know, 80,000 short of what they had out in Nebraska, but who's comparing? It still amazes me, though, like watching football games, and they'll be like, yeah, we have a sold-out crowd of 40,000 people <laughs> yeah. or not even that. And I'm like, wow, the yeah. volleyball match was double or more of that, of a sold-out football crowd. It's just super cool. Louisville coming from behind here. Danny Buscombe Kelly up with the card, but <laughs> then sheepishly walks away because she realized that the point was to her team. Now Coach Ganesha Rodham off his bench with a long conversation 
with the officials, but ultimately doesn't go to his pocket. He wasn't getting a lot of begging from his team, so I think he kind of backed off. Here's Antonio. She's had the hot hand for Syracuse. Looper. Dug out by Burt. Antonio once again, a dig from Scott. It's a round of applause from these knowledgeable Louisville fans. The right side with McCabe, and she is denied. Anna Sherman once again. Fantastic rally there from both sides. The digs. This is a great swing with a dig. And then follow it right by Elena Scott digging this ball outside of her body to keep the ball in play. points Louisville and that'll be one of the challenges for Syracuse what we saw just there limiting mistakes players that in Antonio's case who have had limited playing time this year players as we've mentioned playing out of position the challenges are are plenty for this orange program as Antonio once again with the error and I think it's just the rhythm. Antonio was playing well at the beginning, and now they're feeding her every single ball, which is probably too much. It's a 6-0 run for the Cardinals after Syracuse came out of the break with a couple of early points. Out of the timeout, they go to Antonio once again, and that is a much better swing than she's had the last couple. Shirlene Antonio, seven kills tonight to lead all players. That was off system and maybe not by choice, but I think Antonio does well at decision making when she has a little bit more time. I think a higher ball is key for her. Again, Antonio, a junior college transfer. As Louisville scores, she was an all NJCAA tournament honoree last year for Iowa Western Junior College. Big smile from Charity Looper as she Heads to the bench and gives high fives to her coaches and her teammates. The UCLA transfer. Couldn't tell. She blends right into this Louisville team, despite being one of the few newcomers. Antonio denied. Burt will bump it over. Robbins to Petrenko to De Beer, And then Robbins with the dunk. Two-handed. Burt took that one like a champ, but with a huge dig, only to bring it right to Robbins and have to dive in to try to save the second one. But great dig there from Burt on that power by De Beer. There's Aiden Bartlett, the Kansan, who's come in here to serve once again for Louisville. There's the block, Robbins, back-to-back -back points for her. The block of Robbins and Sherman tonight has been impenetrable. Robbins at 6-5, just two blocks on her stat sheet coming into tonight. Might have a few more opportunities to add to that total. And a double touch there for Syracuse. Syracuse is doing a great job covering, but when Robbins and Shermans are getting up, they're also able to be together and finishing their wrists on these blocks, so that ball is going straight down fast and avoiding the coverage from Syracuse. An overpass. Here's Antonio. And Antonio off the block, able to score. Excellent play there from Leader Miller to keep that ball on her side. Antonio had just 14 kills on the season in 19 sets coming into the night. She's got half of her season total over it now, in fact, with eight. Bartlett a little awkward, but Louisville able to get it to De Beer. And then an overpass, and De Beer pounces. The power that comes off of De Beer's swing. This is the second time we've seen her swing lead to an overpass off the dig. Syracuse is able to get a hand on it, but when it's coming with so much speed, it's hard to absorb that power and keep it on your side of the net. De Beer six for 10. Louisville hitting 548 as a team. 
Syracuse, that was Veronica Searzant into the game, number two. But then on the right side this time, it's Antonio once again. Turning into a career night for Shirlene Antonio. And she's being asked to carry quite a load. She's hitting a lot of balls where the whole gym knows it's going to her off of a bad play. The balls when she's in system, her hitting percentage is pretty good. Schlichter. But it was out. Look for a moment like it might have snuck in that line. But Schlichter unable to score. It's a point to Louisville to give them a seven-point lead in the second set. True freshman Camden Schrand, who's had significant playing time, played in 32 sets this season for Louisville, comes in for the first time tonight. Really carved out a role for herself. Sloppy play on both sides right now. Let's see if Syracuse can have it here out of the back row. There's Antonio. Too much on that. But it's been a heavy dose of Shirlene Antonio, a player that racked up over 700 kills in her junior college career. And again, I love that they're using the hot hand. And with, with Schlichter front row, there's not always a lot of other off-system options right now as a libero playing out of position. But they're maybe working Antonio just a little too hard at the moment. Especially given the fact that she hasn't appeared for them in a few games. Has been in and out of the lineup on the season. Here she is out of the back row once again. On the right side is PK. Terrific dig from Burt. Schlichter has to get it over. They'll set it up to her again. And, oh, not quite. Thought she had the precision on it. Cross court. But just not quite accurate. It's a point to Louisville. Good idea. Yeah, great decision making, and those are the kind of shots she has to hit. We've seen her miss that one and a couple shots down the line, but she's avoiding a huge block. It's going to be difficult for her at 5-6 to hit through that block of Louisville, but she's able to do it off the block this time. Greta Schlichter, again a freshman out of Germany. 45 kills on the season coming into the game add two to her total based on tonight's results so far. Here's De Beer for Louisville, and that is more like it for the Cardinals. A much more conventional outside hitter. And always a cheering section specifically for her, given that she's a Louisville native out of Assumption High School. Player that is going to go down in the lore and the history books of this program when her career is all said and done. She had the dig there, Petrenko on the joust. And now for Louisville, Alana Bankston, the freshman from Nebraska, came into the game, had the attacking error there. And we've seen her a few times this season as well take big swings from the outside. She's not quite the serve receiver and defender that Looper is, but she's able to come in and swing on those off-system blocks or those off-system balls with a double block. They go to Baxton once again, this time with power and authority. The freshman moves into double figures on the season with her 10th kill. That's the exact ball for Alana Bankston. Put it up there, let her find it above the block, and move it around. You hear CC coming from the crowd as Rush comes into the game. Here's a chance for Louisville after Syracuse was out of sorts defensively. Bankston back to back kills. Great set here by Petrenko. You see the middle has to stay true to Sherman and just allows that little hole for Bankston to pound the ball. Anna Sherman getting a longer look tonight from the coaching staff. 
and so far has looked the part of a potential contributor for Louisville despite some struggles early on in the season. Third block of the night for Sherman. There's Antonio out of the back row and make it number four. And this one on a ball with some zip. She's able to time it perfectly on the back row. Swing from Antonio. Sherman's been so disciplined. She was had the setter, then as soon as the setter was off the net, she knew her next assignment was to take the back row attacker. And that is just game experience and discipline as a middle blocker. Two players leading the way on either side tonight. A couple of outside hitters. Shalene Antonio, mentioned earlier, 14 kills on the season coming into tonight. She's got nine, well over half her season total. She's been the primary offensive weapon for the Orange. And she's done a great job with shot selection. You see powerful balls here. You see some line shots, some cross shot. Her highlight package is super diverse. And if Antonio was unexpected to have a high output tonight, Anna DeBeer certainly would have been expected. She is doing what she does. Seven kills on a hitting percentage of over 500. We've seen her on overpasses. We've seen her with the offhand. And then we've seen the very conventional power shots. All has been working tonight for Anna DeBeer. Well, and we've talked about a couple of the power shots that led to the overpasses, that they were basically kills, but they don't count as the kill on the stat sheet um, until you actually put the overpass down. So when she touches the ball for this Louisville team, it leads to good things. Second consecutive year as a captain for this team, Anna DeVere. Not just what she does on the stat sheet, but also what she means to the group, her ability to lead them, bringing energy. And one of my favorite things about Anna DeBeer is in the games where the Cardinals don't need to rely on her, she's very okay with taking the back seat and doing the dirty work and just serve receiving, playing defense, being an option when needed. But she knows how to turn it on the moment the team needs to look to her. Louisville six points away of taking a two-set lead heading into the intermission. The point to Syracuse off the block there. McCabe once again, who's been effective when they've looked her way. It's her third kill hitting 400. She's the only Syracuse player with a positive hitting percentage so far tonight. She does the right thing on the slide. She knows what she's looking for in her fifth year on the court, and she's able to execute. There's Sherman on the slide. McCabe. Now, uh, I beg your pardon, Bankston. Got my freshman confused. Alana Bankston has had a good second set. Now with her third kill already. Bankston is one of the players that makes it look easy. When that ball goes outside, she's so fluid in her motions on her swing. She's up for the block there, and it's off of the block, I believe, of Hannah Sherman that Syracuse scores here with McCabe once again. If it's not been Antonio, it's been McCabe tonight for the Orange. And Syracuse needs to find that balance between Antonio or McCabe. I think a lot of times we're seeing McCabe, 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 McCabe four times in a row, and then the same thing back with Antonio. And I think in order to keep the block guessing, they need a little bit more variation in timing of their offense. And there's Antonio. Taking advantage of a Louisville overpass. Rare mistake from the Cardinals. And for Antonio, that puts her into double figures tonight. There's Reese Robbins. And a ball that may have been heading out from Brooking goes off of her hands for the Louisville point. Got our eyes on some other scores around the ACC tonight. This is the first weekend of ACC play set. Yep, and you see Duke a receiving votes team and Pitt ranked eight. That, that had the potential to be a good matchup, but it looks like so far Pitt's been taking care of business at 2-0. Cannot wait for those Pitt Louisville games. One of them, by the way, will be at the KFC Yum Center coming up later in the season. It's really developing into quite the rivalry at the top of the standings on an annual basis. 
in the ACC. Louisville out of sorts here. Robbins has to hit the deck to try and keep it alive. And Syracuse with another point as Louisville still sits three points away. And the Pitt Louisville matchup was a matchup we got to see in the national semifinals last year as the first time two ACC teams had ever been able to battle in the national semifinals. And if there's one to win, I mean, obviously with the stakes, you know, a chance to play in the national title game as Robin scores. But it's always when you've seen a team not once, not twice, three times, it's so hard. You know, they know each other so well. They've seen each other. They've scouted each other time and time and time again. And for Louisville to be able to pull through in that one last year really spoke highly of the team and of the coaching staff led by Danny Busboom Kelly. I'm sure, though, Pitt still will be thinking about that one when those two teams come together. There's Dina Mora. She's not played this season. Called into action for the first time all year. And she has her first kill, not just of the season, but as a Cardinal after she redshirted last year. And it was a beautiful line shot. Off the tape with Louisville a point away. Oh, Searsant for Syracuse. PK denied. Looked like it was a double contact, but it was uncalled. And Louisville eventually, history, to be fair, last year. And All-American has her name in the rafters here at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena. As the third set is underway. Louisville looking for another sweep against Syracuse. And Syracuse looking to take a set and a loss for the first time this season. Or potentially come back, I suppose I shouldn't be dismissive. But a point to Louisville right out of the gate. You see Louisville's gone after Antonio on these first two serves. And that's something we talked about De Beer being that big hitter. You end up carrying that load in serve receive because teams go after you. That is one thing that Antonio is, is really going to have to pick up her game. If she's hitting as well as she is today, teams are really going to start attacking her in serve receive. Sherman not quite as accurate as she would have liked to have been but then didn't need to be called into action with that attack error from Syracuse. Antonio out of the back row. And it's 3-0 Louisville to start the third set. Sherman actually did a really good job on that ball. It was a little bit of a low set by Petrenko, and Sherman was able to get her hand under it and keep it in play. Point for Louisville on the swing from Schlichter. Long delay on the signal. No one saw an actual touch on that ball, but the ball bounced off the tape, and those are really tough to decide if it caught any arms or not. So it's a good ball to challenge because even if it wasn't going to go without hitting the tape, if it touches any part of an arm as it's playing up there at the tape, it's considered a touch. It was Greta Schlichter who had the swing. Two kills for her tonight. See Sherman up there, Robbins also up and out of the play. Clearly hit the tape, but the question, did it also touch Hannah Sherman? This is a tough angle. From the end line angle, it looked like it may have hit under Sherman, which in this matchup is not unheard of or not something that couldn't happen. But it looks like maybe Sherman is up nice and high, and this ball bounces off the tape right between the logos. But again, if the top or the bottom of Sherman's arm brushed the top of that ball, that's considered a touch. Very difficult to see from those two angles. One, I thought, made it look one way. The other made it look a different way. First challenge of the night for either side. I think that's the hardest part from the R2's perspective when they go and look at the replays is they basically have to build that whole model of all the angles in their head and see, okay, on this one it was low, this one it looks like it's possibly outside of her arm and try to put all those pictures together. This one might be the best angle we've seen yet, I think, to say that it did not hit Sherman, just hit the tape. 
but still I, difficult to say. I think the arm judgment calls are even harder than a lot of times you can see a finger move when we're looking at contacts here, but this is on the lower part of the tape, kind of versus her armpit, and it's tough to tell. Again, it's important to point out that the call on the floor is a point to Louisville that it did not take a touch from Sherman. So they need to find evidence to overturn that initial conclusion. I think this is a good challenge, though, because A, touches are how Schlichter gets her kills. And so they need that confidence. And with the score being what it is, finding any way to turn the tide right now in this third set it is worth it. Yeah, you really feel Louisville. I mean, they're on a run already to start the third set. You want to try and stem that tide as best you can. Stop that bleeding as early on as you can. And that last replay, you really did see the ball change direction. But is that because it touched her arm or was it because it bounced off the tape? So we'll see what the call is. But here, Ganesha Rodham made the challenge, the head coach for Syracuse. And it will remain a point for Louisville. The call standing, I think a case there, Steph, that just wasn't enough evidence to say that the initial call was not correct. I think it's exactly what we saw. You saw the ball change directions. You saw some of the models maybe look like there could be a touch, but nothing definitive. So it remains a 4-0 run to Louisville to start the third as Petrenko takes aim from behind the service line. Here she sets up Reese Robbins. Syracuse, a good swing there from Harris Wadi. And a good dig by Anna DeBeer, defensively for Louisville. Schlichter, and there's a dig from Alana Bankston. Here's DeBeer out of the back row. And that is over the heads of the bench players for Syracuse. And Louisville has a 5-0 run. An eighth kill on the night for Anna DeBeer. Anna DeBeer can do it all. We saw a huge one-handed dig there covering tons of space after the setter released, and then she's able to get back up and finish with the kill. Point for Louisville, Searsent, freshman out of Georgia, who has been a regular player this season. Can't find the finishing touch there. And Petrenko is going after Antonio in serve receive. I would like to see Syracuse mix up their serve receive just a little bit here. Or Petrenko can bail him out with a miss serve. <laughs> I think Syracuse, anyway, you'll take it. But Danny Busboom Kelly off the bench with the challenge card out. She wants to see whether or not that was out of play on that service error, as it was called, from Briggy Petrenko. And Briggy, maybe a wry smile. We'll see exactly how close it was. Petrenko put her hand on her heart and said, oh, thank you. And <laughs> Banks didn't seem to be calling it in, but I, that's a little bit of a tough angle, but I think that ball's out. Just got to catch any part of that white paint. It did drop. When it left Petrenko's hand, I think the whole crowd in the whole arena thought that it was out right along with Antonio, but the ball did kind of slow down and drop. And again, for the exact opposite reason that we said the last challenge was good, I think this is a good challenge, too, to really try to extend that run and really give Petrenko confidence behind that serving line. Call quickly confirmed there, but to your point, that's uh, one that would go under the player-coach style of challenges, saying you support your player on a close call. And a lot of times when Petrenko's not playing the role of starting setter, she comes in as a serving sub or as a double sub for the one rotation, and she serves. So I think that's a place where Danny Busboom Kelly is really looking to have confidence in Petrenko is behind that serving line, and that 5-0 run definitely helped that. Harris Wadi, who has one of the two aces on the night for Syracuse, has a service error there. Fourth service error on the night for the Cuse. And now, Alana Bankston steps back. There's McCabe. Kind of didn't hit it the way I think she wanted to hit it. But it was effective. Not, a, not the cleanest touch, but it gets the job done. Also, one of the first times we've seen her in front of the setter today.
There's Melina Brooking. Out of Laurel, Maryland, St. John's College High School. A sophomore had limited playing time last year. Service error for her. Here's Anna DeBeer. Closing in on a double figure kill night once again this season. Eight kills on, make it nine kills in fact, on 15 swings for Anna. Schlichter. Pass from Petrenko wasn't quite on target to Robbins. Might get another chance. She does. And she takes advantage. That time, the assist to Petrenko. The ball played right where Robbins won her. And some of the discipline for the Louisville Cardinals isn't as important right now. They're winning 10 to 2. However, I like to see Petrenko making the decision to exploit the matchup between Robbins and Schlichter instead of just taking the easy ball and setting outside to the beer. And the beer's eyes got huge just a moment ago, but Louisville able to score ultimately through the block. Robbins credited with the block once again. It's her third block of the night. Schlichter was looking to use the outside arm of Robbins, and Robbins did a good job of finishing her outside hand back into the middle of the court. For Louisville leading by nine here in set three, it's a positive sign for Danny Busboom Kelly that there's no hangover from that reverse sweep to Stanford. A high-profile game, a game that was nationally televised on ESPN2 on a Sunday afternoon before a crowd of nearly 10,000. And Louisville was... Really clean, dominant in the first two sets, but then something changed. Sarah, uh, Stanford, rather, made an adjustment, and Louisville could not answer. And you just wondered maybe if that loss might linger a little bit in the minds of these Louisville players. No such indication based on tonight's results so far. Typically, a loss does one thing. It either lingers or it lights a fire. And I think it looks like Louisville has really had a fire lit under them in practice this last week. And again, we talked about everybody firing on all cylinders. What a set by Bankston. The ball nearly hit the ceiling. And then Syracuse is unable to get it over Jobert. Off kilter trying to find it. De Beer just gave Bankston the, the look that, how did you do that? Watch Bankston backwards and sideways and still sets a ball that De Beer is able to take a full swing on. De Beer was impressed. Few quality performances from freshmen tonight for Louisville. See the service errors there between the two sides. Most recent one ended a 6-0 run in favor of the Cardinals. Here's Greta Schlichter. Five aces on the season. Make it six after she had one earlier on the night. But Louisville does the job. PK with that most recent point. And a couple of lesser experienced players who we've already seen a couple of times tonight. Alexis Finvold, who you see there coming in for the second time. And Nina Moore also into the game for Louisville. And both, Finvold's in a setting role this time. Both players that redshirted a year ago. And Finvold, after a service error her first go around, a big smile on her face as she has the ace to give Louisville a side hitting role at just 5-6 against some very lengthy blockers for Louisville. Always going to be a challenge. An overpass, but PK might have been a little too excited. Thought she had her name on the score sheet again. Just sort of fell backward in the air and hit it right into the net. When that ball's coming straight down from the ceiling on top of your head, it's just tough to time when to jump and swing. PK, a quieter night, two kills and two blocks. 
That one's out. Service error gives the point right back to Louisville. No players for Louisville in double figure kills thus far. Anna DeBeer leading the way with nine. And to that point, and to the hitting efficiency stat that we showed earlier, I think the depth of this Louisville team has been so apparent tonight. And they're able to have options, and they're executing. It doesn't look like they're using second and third options as they go. 15 Louisville players have seen the floor tonight. A little false start there from CC Rush. Got a laugh out of the crowd. Here's Antonio. She's been quiet of late with 10 kills leading the way for Syracuse. Bankston denied. Morer wins the joust. Antonio, terrific diving dig there from Finbold. Bankston, a full swing. Back and forth volleyball, and ultimately Syracuse big celebrations as they get the point on maybe the best rally of the night between these two sides. And no lack of hustle and effort from this Cuse team. Vera Liedermuller, another freshman out of Germany. I mentioned Schlichter, a youth international. She was a teammate of Liedermuller on that U16 German national team a few years back. Point to Louisville, though, as Liedermuller cannot connect from the serve. And the ball control of the Cuse team has not been a problem tonight. You just talked about both of them being being German national team players and are going to contribute to this Q's team in the long run. They're just lacking some offensive weapons right now with their injuries. Antonio scores off the block. Ball spinning toward Finvold. She dove to the floor to try and keep it alive. Bakir Ganesharadam led Temple to four consecutive 20 win season, seasons, led them to a postseason berth for the first time in 15 years during his 11-year run as head coach of the Owls. In his second year at Syracuse, team that won 11 games last year, seven in the ACC. Still building this program as Moore gets on the board once again. Always going to be a challenge for his team on the road at number five, Louisville. Throwing the injuries, throwing the inexperience. But I would imagine this season he would say it's about little points of growth. But I asked him in the pregame, too. I said, hey, do you have dreams of playing a game in the Carrier Dome and thinking about some of these attendance uh, records that were set? And he said, yeah, in a few years when we're ready, I think a match like this at Syracuse in the Carrier Dome would be an absolute highlight. Bankston gets the kill. But Elena Scott closing in on a 1,000 digs for her career. Adds a couple here. And not only does she keep the ball off the ground, her location on these digs right on the setter's head is what makes her great. There's Petrenko going to the floor. And there's Bankston, another great swing, but well defended by Liedermuller. Sherman, though, finishes it for Louisville to give them 20 points in set three. But Elena Scott... One of the leaders of this Louisville team has been terrific tonight, closing in on that mark. She would be the 11th player in Louisville volleyball history to add her name to that 1,000-dig club. And we just watched her get two digs in one rally, so that four can happen quickly. There's an ace for Louisville. And Kara Cressy out of the middle. It's been able to just kind of rejuvenate and start over as conference play starts without giving a, without not putting the mental load on conference play that is deserved for conference play. Louisville four points away from a 1 0 start in ACC play. And Bankston has been often used. A good dig on the end of it, though, from Syracuse. They go back to Bankston again. She's got some fire in that right arm. The power of her swing reminds me of one other person, Anna DeBeer. I don't think a higher compliment could be played, uh, paid a true freshman in this Louisville program. There's a dig for Scott. Bankston again. 
Sherman. And the block for Syracuse has made an impact in some recent points. They score here. Zaria Harris Wadi. There's Bankston now on the right side. In the third set, you can put a lot of Bankston's name up on it. Six kills for her on the night now for the true freshman. And with Louisville two points away, he's programmed volleyball-wise, took a few steps forward. And with the way attendance is climbing across the country, that would be an absolutely fun venue, an electric venue to see this team play. There's Reese Robbins. But it is an attacking error and a point to Louisville. Cardinals, though, the team claiming that it was deflected by Syracuse and Danny Busboom Kelly obliges her players. Off the bench with the challenge card. And we will head to the monitors once again tonight. Louisville looking to earn a match point via this challenge. I think these are tough. Sometimes it's, hey, you're winning 23 to 8. Why would you challenge this? But also you watch right away. Reese Robbins is a freshman taking a big swing on the right side. And you watch every single one of her teammates that's covering so diligently come up and say that it was a touched ball. And you teach your team every day in practice not to worry about the score and to play hard the whole way through. And we won't mention that they just came off a of reverse sweep where <laughs> if you let go at any point, you can lose the momentum. So I think I think it's a good challenge as far as team camaraderie, but I understand what the flip side could be of the 23 to 8 challenge timing. But it looks like another difficult call to make. Touches are always tough, especially as we talked about last time, the ones that are going past arms. I think when you can see fingers moving. And that's the case here. Yeah. But that that image there, inconclusive, I would say, as to whether or not the fingers move. But there are other angles that they've looked at as well. Let's see. Headset is off. The call is that it was touched. And it's a point to Louisville. And the Cardinals now a point away. The crowd rising to its feet. Danny Busboom Kelly looking to go 1-0 in the ACC in 2023. And the fans will have to wait just another long moment. Seventh service error of the night. Can Syracuse extend the game? Robbins to finish it off, and she does. Off the block, a point to Louisville. And it is 1-0 and oh in the ACC for the Cardinals. And for Elena Scott, her moment of history.